Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3T Path channel. My name is Giri Daridas and today I want to tell you about a very important contribution from the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras which is the concept of karmasya. Very important concept which explains how we are the way we are. Why? I mean how does it happen that people are the way they are, their personality, their behavior. How did we get to this point? It's a very important concept of the Yoga Sutra. So I'm going to be reading for you one of the sutras from Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, Sutra 2.12, Sutra 12 of Chapter 2, and then we'll explain the concept. So the sutra goes like this. Klesha mula karmasya drishta adrishta janma vedanya. Translation, these pains, these kleshas, are at the root of our karma and are experienced in this life and in future lives. So what is this? This is the concept of karmasya. So the idea is that in yoga psychology, which, you know, the, that's the great contribution of the yoga sutras. This is beautiful with yoga psychology. We have this understanding that everything you do, Every thought you have, everything that's going on, these are called vrittis. These are movements of the mind. So we have this term vritti right at the beginning, like the whole concept of Yoga Sutras, vrittis. So anything, any, anything you remember, you, 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 you dream of, you see, you experience, you, you imagine, vrittis. These are little movements of the mind. Now, these are going on all the time, right? Every, and then neuroscience confirms, right? Every time some inputs come into your brain, things are lighting up, neurons are lighting up, things are happening all the time. And when you're dreaming as well, when you imagine as well, so this is right, you know, confirmed by science, you know. So, so you have these vrittis all the time. Now, the intensity of the vritti will make a difference. Right? So, for example, you may walk a thousand times the same, like let's say you walk to the bus station or something, or to get a, a tube to go to work, I don't know. So, or you walk your dog, you, you may do that walk a thousand times, and you, you know, nothing like you don't register anything so much. But then one day, let's say, you know, you find uh, a big wad of, of money on the path. So, then that's like, that will cause a, a, an impression, right? It's like, oh, that will then, intensity of that experience is like, that's such a strange experience, like remarkable experience. So that's going to create a mark, that's going to leave a mark. And these marks are called the samskaras. So according to the repetition or the intensity of the vrittis, you then get a samskara, a real subliminal register. So it won't pass unnoticed anymore. It's going to be registered in your being, in your subtle body, to be precise. It's going to be registered this samskara. That's why like the traumatic experiences, the really important experience, or, or something, you just do it over and over and over and over again. These create a samskara. Now, as these samskaras accumulate, you get what's called a vasana. You get a tendency. So then you start getting a tendency based on the samskaras, which are based on these vrittis, which are getting confirmed. Now, the accumulation of these vrittis and these samskaras and these vasanas, this is what we call this, this major, this total accumulation of your past karma. We call this the karmasya. So when you come, when you, well, right now, you've got this store. Karmasya can be also translated as the store of karma, so like that store, not just of, but all of your past impressions, everything that's still being worked on you, that is influencing you, that's actively molding you. This is called the karmasya, the active components of all your accumulated experiences. And of course, when you're born, you're born with this karmasya. It's not just the, you know, of course, the karma is defining the kind of body you have, place, family, you know, characteristics and all that. But then, like, the nature, the personality, like, why do you re react to certain things? Why are you attracted to other things? Why do you behave in such a way? Why is your personality like that? This is karmasya. This is the accumulation of these vrittis, and the strong ones became samskaras, and the samskaras became vasanas, and that's what we're working with. 
So yoga sutras explain, look, the way you are now, of course, you know, modern psychology, they'll look at, um, oh, let's see what happened in your childhood. And we'll, you know, like Freud, and oh, let's like analyze that. And we'll, we can say how you are now because of something that happened when you're five years old. Okay, that's fine. But yoga sutras is saying the yoga psychologists look, no, actually, we have to look way back. We have to look lives and lives. And, and so we're not even going to look back because we can't even see it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be aware that right now, I am working with the accumulated vrittis, samskaras, vasanas of many lifetimes. And I'm working on that now and I am carrying that. So first thing we have to do is we have to be kind to ourselves. You have to be accepting and kind to yourself because you may not like some things that you're carrying, some of these tendencies, these vasanas that you're, they're acting upon you now. You may not like them so much. You may not appreciate, you may like, you know, look, we have that, right? We have things and we don't like that we have those things. You don't like that you're susceptible to this kind of situation and that you're overly attracted to that kind of, you don't like that, but that's the way you are because you're carrying this baggage. So we have to have this element of self-compassion, kindness, acceptance. Okay, I am, you know, I've got this, you know, it's just like this, I'm just a situation. I've, I've accumulated this stuff. You know, like if you go tramsing through the, you know, hike, a muddy hike, and you get, and you get mud on yourself. You're like, you may not like the mud, but it's like, that's it. You know, the path, that's what it comes with. It comes with mud, maybe some brambles. You cut yourself a bit. So like, yeah, I've got some cuts. I've got mud. This is just the nature of the path I've been in. You know, and I have to accept that this is the way it is. Now, what we have to do as well now is that we have to become aware of the process. So Yoga Sutras is saying, look, this is going on. So now you become aware of it. Become aware that these vrittis are counting. Every vritti is counting. Every moment you are molding yourself. Your consciousness is a fluent fluid thing it's always in motion vrittis means motions you're always changing you are your karmasya isn't fixed you're not it's 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 a constant process so you're constantly having these vrittis so yoga sutras the the the, the spiritual path of yoga we're going to start hacking the system i'm going to purposely now be very attentive of every vritti i have you know, well, you know in general at least. I'm going to be attentive of the movements of my conscious, where I'm focusing my mind. And I'm going to start creating different kinds of samskara. So then in the Yoga Sutra language, it says that you burn the previous samskaras. And how do you do that? By replacing it with the new samskara in the direction you want to go to. It's a very interesting concept. So, spiritualist i want to transcend reality i want to become i want to elevate my consciousness i want to have divine spiritual devotional compassionate consciousness so i have to replace my mundane samskaras with registers with intense samskaras of compassion of spirituality of bhakti of devotion of connection with krishna and my you have to replace them and how do i do that by giving my vrittis intensity by putting my purpose mindfulness by putting my consciousness in the connections having stronger connections and also by repetition by maintaining my consciousness in this state by bringing my mind back that's why you'll see concept of meditation any meditator will tell you that from any path your mind leaves, you bring it back. Your mind goes, you bring it back. That's what meditation is. It's a whole purpose, you know, it's just like this exercise of, okay, I'm supposed to be focused on this. My mind goes, I bring it back. My mind goes, I bring it back. And every second, every moment that you're in the right place with your mind, you are creating that situation, you're creating that samskara, that vasana, that tendency, you are molding yourself now in your control, now aware of the process. You can direct this psychological, spiritual progress of molding your consciousness. Very interesting concept. Vritti, samskara, vasanas, 
all this, dear Kamarsa, you can assume command and control of this process now. That's why in the spiritual, any spiritual path, but especially the one that I'm sharing here, Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Sutras, it's all about all the time, connecting all the time, not something you do, not a ritual you do. That's why it doesn't work. Like, oh, I just go on Sundays and I have this nice experience. Okay, and then the rest of the week I forget about God and religion and soul. It doesn't work. That's why not, yoga isn't about that. Yoga is about all the time. Always think of me, Krishna says. Always think of me with your mind and intelligence. Always fixed on me. Krishna says that over and over again in different ways in Bhagavad Gita. Always fixed on me. Think of me. Always this. What's that? That's like every vritti I'm trying to like, oh, nope, direct that vritti to Krishna. I want to direct my consciousnesses up. I want to keep my, my mind fixed on God, on bhakti. I want to elevate. My mind is always there. And therefore, naturally, I'll start experiencing the accumulation of this, I mean, I mean, these spiritual samskaras, you know, these transcendental samskaras, which will then replace my current karmasya, my current mundane vasanas, my tendencies to be mundane, to be selfish, to be self-centered here in matter and, 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 and you know, whatever, lusty and greedy and all that nonsense we do here. So that's how it works. Very interesting concept. I hope it's clear to you. If it's not, leave your questions below. And hey, don't forget to share this video with like-minded souls. You can attract more people to this wonderful path of the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras. And have the rest of your day with lots of peace and lots of love.